Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the last few series of videos, uh, we looked at how to perform image segmentation using traditional machine learning. And for that, we generated a whole bunch of features uh, using a bore filter and a, whole, uh, and a couple of other filters. And we used random forest machine learning classifier to take in all that feature information and then uh, generate a model for us. So in today's tutorial, let's talk about a different type of classifier uh, called support vector machine. And this is second only to random forest. And I, I believe uh, nowadays, if anyone uses traditional machine learning, the top two algorithms would be the number one uh, random forest, number two support vector machine. In the next tutorial, Let's actually uh, put these two head to head, but for now, let's understand what support vector machine is at a high level. So like any other machine learning programs, especially uh, any other supervised machine learning programs, the aim of support vector machine is to help us separate or classify or segment uh, data into n number of classes. Yeah, so into n number of features. So let me get to the drawing board to explain this a bit uh, further. So let's say again, uh, you have uh, a cluster of data or a couple of clusters, I'm sorry about that. So you have a couple of clusters of data, okay? So on one side you have, uh, you know, I'm just going to show easy situation. And on the other side you have, uh, uh, let's change the color to make things easy. So you have like a whole bunch of data points right here. I mean, this is an easy case scenario, but let's say this is the data, okay? So how can we segment this data, right? I mean, you can actually uh, uh, separate this multiple ways. Of course, you can use k-means is one way where you can do, uh, you know, unsupervised, but uh, you can separate this in a many, many ways. Like, for example, you can actually draw a line like that goes like this. You can draw a line that goes like this. Uh, both are right. Right? I mean, both of these are, there's nothing wrong with that. But what is uh, uh, the way the support vector machine actually does is its objective is to find a hyperplane. Okay, I'm calling it a hyperplane. It's in, in this case, it would be a line, but a hyperplane in n dimensional space, right? I mean, n is the number of features that you're trying. Uh, and so it, it, uh, it, it tries to find this hyperplane or define this hyperplane that classifies these uh, data points, okay? And uh, how does it do that? Uh, let me see if I can find an uh, eraser or just uh, go edit, undo, edit, undo to remove those lines. So eventually the hyperplane in this example for support vector machine, uh, let me try to be careful here. Okay, right there, like somewhere in between, right? And then you have, uh, you have this margin right there so let's say this is the line where this data stops. This is the line th where this data stops. Okay. So the aim is to find this hyperplane where you have this optimal margin between the two data points. Okay. So, uh, and, and uh, in other words, this plane has the maximum margin or it maximizes the margin or distance between the data points of both the classes. Okay, so the hyperplane is defined such a way that it maximizes this margin between these two data points. So that's in summary what support vector machines is. That's it. Okay, and I showed you a you know uh, a, a cluster right here. It can be in three dimensions, right? I mean, it can be in n dimensions, like like I actually uh, mentioned. And there are various uh, uh, components that actually go into this. Uh, of course, how does the algorithm actually work? Well, it's maximizing, like I said, it's maximizing this uh, distance between these two uh, data sets. So uh, the loss function in this case, and again, if you remember any machine learning, it, uh, there is some sort of a loss function and you're trying to minimize this loss function, right? So the loss function in this case would be the distance, you know, between these two uh, data points. And that is the loss function. So it is trying to actually maximize the distance or minimize the loss function, let's say, uh, by maximizing the distance and defining this hyperplane. So I hope uh, I hope it actually provides a quick overview. Now we can dig a bit deeper by understanding a couple of other terms. Okay. So first of all, let me actually show you. Uh, 
uh, in fact, let's go ahead and write down how the implementation is done in uh, Python and then look at like each of the parameter that's actually defined in there. So for that, let me look up the documentation for support vector machines on the scikit-learn page. So let me bring up the page. Uh, here it is. So this is directly from the scikit-learn uh, uh, web page. So let me go ahead and zoom in so we can actually focus on a couple of things. So the way uh, obviously you call this is sklearn.svm and import svc. So that's how you implement this. And there are a few parameters that actually go in there. Okay. So uh, let me uh, address only a couple of uh, important ones. For example, kernel uh, right here. What does kernel actually mean? Yeah. So uh, let me uh, let's go back to the drawing board and then define what a uh, kernel is. This is probably the easiest way to explain. So uh, in the previous example, I showed you again the data that's kind of well separated. But uh, uh, let's say what if you have like data that is uh, uh, let's go back to our blue. So you have like a whole bunch of data points right here, okay? And then you have a different set of data points, okay? that are uh, scattered around like right here. So now where do you draw the line, right? So how do we draw the line? As humans, we can see that, hey, there is the circle, separate the data points right here. So this is what the kernel actually tries to do. So the kernel applies some sort of a transformation depending on whatever kernel you choose, it applies the transformation. So if you actually transform this, from X and Y into some sort of a Z value, because this is nothing but uh, a circle, right? So if you say my Z is equal to X squared plus Y squared, okay? Again, I try not to get into too much math, but uh, if you look at that, then what happens is, uh, let's go back to this uh, coordinate space. So now you have, instead of, uh, sorry, previously we had like X and Y, and now I have, uh, let's say Y or X and Z, let's say. Uh, so now what we have is uh, there is a way we can separate these data points. So you can have these data points up here, the ones in the middle, and then you can have the circles, you know, the red ones that are lying down here, for example, let's say. And then now you can draw a line right here that can separate these two. So that's a support vector machine. So that is what the kernel actually does. Now, what is a good kernel for, it, it completely depends on your application. I'm not sure if the documentation defines that in detail, but again, there are a few of these like linear, polynomial, RBF, sigmoid, and so on. Okay, again, experiment with this and see how it works on your data. So moving on, the next thing, uh, in fact, let's go back up a little bit. So C, we didn't talk about this. So this is a regularization parameter, and uh, this has to do with uh, misclassification and overfitting. So um, let me explain this uh, just by, again, uh, going back to the drawing board. So for example, if you have uh, some data that is uh, close by, let's say, uh, let's say I have this, let me draw this two times so we can do pretty much the same thing here. And you have uh, a few data points right here. Okay, and then uh, let's do the same thing. Hopefully I can repeat this. So you have a few data points right here and then you have another set of data points, uh, you know, right there. Let's say right there. So uh, let's try to repeat this. So this is the same data I'm representing in two graphs, okay? So now, how do you actually fit this data, right? So a good way, one good way is to actually draw something, uh, maybe if I can draw it, you know, something like, I'm sorry, I cannot seem to draw this, uh, but anyway. So one good way is right there, except uh, this one data point is misclassified, okay? Uh, now, the other way we can do is I can just go right there, I can do this, and I can do that, okay? So, it's it's okay. We can do something like this if the bunch of data actually represents this, you know? But in this case, uh, again, if you have, uh, let's say, a few more data points, like another data point right here, sorry for drawing over this. So, in this example, we have two of these data points that are kind of misclassified. Now, the question is, are you comfortable with this misclassification? Meaning, in general, are you trying to fit it so it is generalized for a whole bunch of data? Or are you trying to fit it this way, and in some cases that means overfitting? 
because uh, your it, it works well for the data that you supplied here, but how well does it work on data that it has uh, not seen before, it, it never saw before, okay? So that's what that uh, uh, parameter is, and uh, what else? So what is the next one? Let's go back to the documentation, and let me explain at least one or two more. So gamma, okay? Uh, gamma is, uh, let's say, uh, let's delete everything on this page again. So gamma has to do with, uh, uh, you know, what you would like to include in calculating this hyperplane. You know, how far of the data points would you like to include? So a, a quick way I can explain that is, let's say, again, going back, you have some data points that are right here. Okay, so these are some data points, and then you have another data points. Again, I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit, uh, I mean, or making this a bit easy. So if you draw a hyperplane that is right here, so in calculating this, of course, you're going to use the distance between these, distance between these data points, and you're trying to optimize this hyperplane, right? That is what SVM does. So if you use high gamma, okay, so this high gamma factor, then only the closest ones are included. It's a bit counterintuitive. And if you use a low gamma, the faraway points are also included in calculating uh, in, in calculating this surface or, or this uh, hyperplane. Okay, so all of these... Uh, higher ones are, uh, the farther ones are used. So that's basically what uh, uh, gamma does in this, uh, in this, uh, you know, the parameter gamma, gamma does for support vector machines. So this is support vector machines in a nutshell. And of course, if you want to explore, go ahead and uh, Google search for support vector machines online and you have a tremendous amount of resources that you can uh, find you know, to dig deeper into this. So in the next tutorial, let's uh, build something that uses support vector machines. I really do not want to work on the same image segmentation, but let's actually do build a image classification uh, algorithm or image classification code, you know, a code to do some sort of a classification where we can classify classify uh, healthy cells versus sick cells, or, uh, uh, you know, this is an aeroplane, this is a bicycle, this is a car, this is something else. And for that, uh, let's use support vector machines. And let's also try to use random forest on the same data set to see which one wins. Okay, so hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until then, please like this tutorial, subscribe to my channel, and thank you very much.